chapter number 17. It was a surprise series, I guess. I wasn't planned by no means, uh, but Brother Blake Glenn, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, he came and preached for us and uh, shared a message along these texts. And the Lord put us in this, these texts, and we've not been out of it, but this will be the last uh, in our five-part series that we've done on Wednesday nights. It's been an encouragement to me. I don't know about you, but it's been very uh, encouraging and been very helpful to do this study. But if you've got your Bibles, we'll be in Matthew chapter 17. We'll start reading at verse number 20. It's been our main text, and the study has been faith to move mountains. What we're trying is uh, to have that kind of faith. And don't take a lot of faith to move mountains because look what it says in Matthew 17 and verse number 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you that, you, that if you have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, Lord, that your word is a living word, and it's so true still to this day. And Lord, how we look at this text uh, week after week, and we, we glean new things, and we gain new understandings of this week after week. And Lord, just help us as we try to close out this study, and just uh, what an encouragement it's been to all of us. Uh, just let us uh, do what we need to do and be who we need to be for you and have that faith to move mountains. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been studying over the past few weeks this faith to move mountains. We looked at unbelief one week. We looked at God because you had to, if you have faith, you've got to have God. We've looked at prayer and we looked at fasting last week. This week we're going to look at our part to that. Uh, during, our, during one of the weeks I was reading that, the faith is a grain of a mustard seed, and I thought about it, it don't take much faith. Then I thought, well, it ain't just faith either. It takes us doing our part sometimes uh, with that. And I wanted to, uh, uh, the Lord laid that on my heart some weeks back when we were studying that, and I first read that. But I want to look at verse number 14, go back and just recap just a moment. I'm not going to retell the whole story verse by verse, but it says in verse number 14 that when they were come the multitude to the multitude there, came a man came to him a certain man kneeling down to him saying Lord have mercy on my son for he is a lunatic sore vexed and oft times falleth into the fire and oft into the water so there's this man bringing his son to be healed but I, here's something we've not really looked at in this text is it's a certain man now I still believe to this day it, we read here in the text in verse number 14 there came to him a certain man. And I still believe to this day that there's still certain uh, men, there's certain women, there's certain uh, children, certain people that we run across on a daily basis. I believe God has divine appointments. He has divine uh, interactions everywhere we go. It's not by happenstance that we run across who we run across. And, and, and there's a divine appointment. And I believe this was a divine appointment. But I truly believe we still have them to this day. They still exist. And this is a certain man. And, and there's these divine appointments that certainly appear still in our life. Now, uh, with the faith of, to move mountains, even though a certain man appears in our life and certain people appear in our life, we've got to be able to do our part. If we say, well, I've got faith. Well, I'll just pray. That is the best thing we can do. We can pray, and we can have faith, but we also have to do our part because sometimes we run into these people, and we run into people in need, or we cross paths with certain individuals, and it's not by happenstance. It's not a coincidence that you're even here on a Wednesday night hearing this message that we've got to do our part. Because see, in Matthew 10 and verse number 1, Jesus equipped his disciples. They were equipped to heal this certain man and to do what this certain man needed. And he needed his son to be healed. Now we all know that God is able because in, in, in verse number 20 that we just read, it said, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing is, shall be impossible. See, if you put God in the mix, there's nothing impossible. But I saw something else new this week. 
that uh, maybe you've seen, maybe you, ha you haven't, but something that I've not really looked, uh, pointed into much is it says we read nothing is impossible unto you. A lot of times we've read that over the past few weeks and we said, well, there's nothing impossible to God. If it's not impossible to God, it's not impossible to us. But we really have not focused on that word you. Nothing is impossible unto you. That means nothing is impossible to us. Every one of us, nothing is impossible. Because if, if it's not impossible to a big, big God, and he's living inside us, it's not impossible unto us as well. God can, and God's able, and he's more than able. All it takes is a little bit of faith. It don't even take a lot of faith, because verse number 20 says, if you have the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, not just faith, it takes us doing our part. Because it says uh, in that verse there, he says, nothing shall be impossible unto you. We can have the faith. We can do our part. We can have our faith. Uh, but here's the thing. God's equipped us to do some stuff. And here's the thing. I can have the faith, but there's sometimes I've got to put my part with that faith in order to get it accomplished. God can accomplish it. He can do it all. But there's something interesting about God this evening. It's actually the same interesting thing about God all throughout time. It's with God, He can do anything. But the thing with God is He wants to partner with us. And He wants us to work with Him. Because we can have the faith, but if we take this this passage, all it says is, hey, we need faith and we need prayer and we need fasting and those three things will get it accomplished. And I'm sure it would. But there's also times in your Bible like James 2 and 26 that says, for the body is without the spirit dead, so faith without works is dead. In other words, if you have a body without a, without a uh, spirit, you have a corpse. It's dead. Well, guess what? If we have faith without the, the putting something behind it, it's dead. Now, we can put prayer behind it. We can put fasting behind it. But we also can put works behind it. In other words, we've got to have that faith, but without that prayer, because verse 21 says, How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. But I truly believe we also have a part and we have a role. And I want to look at that, and the uh, first thing I want to show you and look at this evening is the dual partnership with God. See, we've got to do our part, and you need to realize that and, and to acknowledge it's a dual partnership with God. Now, listen to this. I'm not saying that we're equal by no means. We're not equal. But God wants to use every one of us. Now, I want to say this too. He don't need us. He don't need us at all. But He desires to use us. And that's interesting. He don't need us. He don't have to have us. He existed before us. He's going to exist after, after us. In the beginning was God. But here's the thing. In, in Matthew 7 and verse number 17 and verse number 19 in our text, uh, he, it says, And then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Now here's the thing. He equipped them to do that. They should have been able to. But look at his response. He says, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, nothing shall be impossible. Now something else I saw this week as I studied, and we've done this five weeks now, and on the fifth week I finally realized that something occurs five times in this verse. In verse number 20, look at what it says. It says, because of your, there's one you. He says, and I say unto you, if ye have, have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Five times I see references to the word you or your or ye. Five times in that text. Now I got to thinking about that and it stood out to me this last time of our study. Why is ye and you mentioned that many times. Well, five is an important number in the Bible. What it does is it, 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 it symbolizes and represents God's grace, God's goodness, and God's favor toward human beings. God's grace and God's, is, is God's unmerited favor toward human beings. It's God's favor toward human beings. God's grace that even though I'm a failure, even though I'm weak, 
And even though I'm troubled from time to time, I've got grace in the eyes of the Lord. I've got unmerited favor that even though I don't deserve the favor, He gives me favor. Now five times in that verse we read that and, and, and really that's what that whole verse is about. It's about his, his grace and His favor and His unmerited love toward us. Because God don't, He don't need us, but He desires to use us. You is used, or a form of the word you is used five times in that text. And that's the grace of God. Five represents God's grace and the fact that He wants to use us, the fact that He loves us enough to want to use us, is just His grace. It's just grace that He even wants to. Because He don't have to, but He wants to. That's just Him demonstrating His grace to us. He desires to use us. He desires to have a dual partnership with us. Now when I think of a dual partnership, I think of 50-50, but it's more like 99-1 or something like that, and that's even a stretch because we ain't even 1% really compared to His 99. But what it is, He does want to partner with us. And, and, and you know, He could do everything on His own, but God has never chosen to do it on His own. Think about Noah. He could have saved the whole world some way other than Noah, but He chose Noah. He gave Noah the plans on how to build the ark, but Noah had to have the faith and he used Noah to build the ark. What about the raising of Lazarus? Ain't nobody could have raised Lazarus from the dead other than him. But then he used men to roll that stone away. What about that little boy eating that fish and the bread? Now, ain't nobody could have multiplied that bread like Jesus did. But guess what? He used that little boy's food. But he also used the disciples to help distribute that much food to 5,000 uh, possibly even more people. 5,000 men, not mentioning the women and children. So it's you see the partnership all throughout the Word of God. Time and time again, He just wants to partner with us, to, to use us. And it pleases God to use people. And guess what? That's what's going on in our text. He's, he, it's pleasing Him to use us. And He's pleasing Him to use His disciples in this, in this uh, text as well. Because guess what? They brought that boy to Him. He was, they were supposed to heal. They had a partnership and they couldn't heal. He partnered even with the disciples. He's even partnering with us to this day. So I see the dual partnership of God and how God partners with us. And so that means there's two parts to this partnership. There's God and there's man. Now, with God, what are we without God? Well, we ain't nothing. That's as simple as that. You could go all the way back to the beginning in Genesis and we're dust without Him. We're nothing without Him. And, and, and ain't none of us anything. That heart that's beating in your chest right now, that's because of God. The ability to be here this evening is because of God. The, the ability to breathe and, and, and just be alive is because of God. Everything that we have is because of Him. But then you go a step further, well, I wouldn't have no hope, I wouldn't have no purpose, I wouldn't have a part of a plan. I wouldn't have a reason to be here. I'd be living for myself. But the ability to partner with His Word, that's, that's an amazing thing. And God wants to do that. I don't think we take that as seriously as we really should and could. That's an amazing thing to think that when you love somebody, you're partnering and pairing with God and you're letting God be ex exposed and you're showing Him off in your life. Simply put, without Him, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be anything. None of us would. Now, He wants to partner with us, but without Him, I don't even exist. I'm nothing. In other words, with the faith to move mountains, we ain't moving nothing. We ain't even thinking about moving a mountain without Him. So you leave God out, you ain't going to have your part anyway. We won't have a part. There ain't no part to have. Because I truly believe that with faith, there's sometimes we have to put legs to those prayers and we have to do our part. But my, how I need Him and you need Him and there, there's nothing that we can do. Nothing that no individual can do listening here or listening online or wherever that nobody can do nothing. Ourselves, we can't do nothing. The church cannot function without Him. Our homes are nothing without Him. We've got to have Him. And especially in this text of moving mountains, I, I truly believe each week we've looked 
It's an, an unbelief and how we've got to have that belief in Him. We've looked at God and how it's a faith, a little faith in a big, big God can do big things. We've looked at prayer and how we're turning it over to God and making that petition. And when we do make that prayer, we need to ask and seek and knock and search God out. But then we said fasting and just getting our eyes off this world. Putting the world to the side and just, if we focus on the heavenly, my gosh, this worldly and the things that we face would seem so small. But we see that with this, we have a dual partnership with God but there also we see that there's a God and we know that there's a God but I'll tell you so many times we fail to mention, we fail to realize just what we'd be without Him. Certainly we couldn't say in verse number 20 remove hence to yonder place speaking of a mountain something we can't see past or something we can't look over something we can't climb over remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you the reason the you is there is because there's a partnership with God. But the only other reason that you is there is because there's a God. It ain't nothing's impossible with Dustin that I can believe it and I can achieve it and I can do it. It's nothing about me. It's all about God. I think over these past few weeks what we've seen and what we've studied is it's got to be God. And, and I'll tell you, the more we look at Him and the more we focus on Him, the bigger He is and actually the smaller we are. But it's so good to know that he does want to partner with us. But it says there in verse 20, nothing shall be impossible unto you. And we see there's a dual partnership and he wants to use us. We've seen there's God, but there's also a man. There's us that he wants to partner with. And you know, it's got to take God, but it's also going to take man. See, God can, God is able, and God can do whatever God wants to do. He don't need us. But all throughout the Bible, he wants to use man. And he did right here in our text. In verse number 14, it says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came a certain man. That's that a divine appointment that comes into our lives sometimes. And there's that certain man kneeling down to him, and he's saying, Lord, have mercy for, on my son. For he is a lunatic and sore vexed, and oft time falleth into the fire and oft in the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and he could not cure him. They bring him to the disciples and they were equipped. They were able and they should have been able to heal him and they couldn't. Again, the disciples are nothing without God. We're nothing without him. We're nothing. They were equipped and they couldn't do what they're equipped to do. I brought him to thy disciples. I didn't bring him to just any disciples. I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. They wanted to be, he wanted to use them. But when it got down to it, he couldn't use them. The disciples couldn't cure him. That's what we read there in verse 16. The, here's the thing we've got to remember about the disciples. They're ordinary men just like you and I. They, they go through things. And I think something the Lord's trying to teach us here is I want to use you. I want to partner with you. I want to do amazing things. I'm in heaven, I'm in control of it all, and I can do it all, I can handle it all, but I want to use you. Uh, there's some people at the workplace that, that may never see God, but they can see you, they see you at the daily, on a daily basis, and when they see you, they see God. And God's wanting to use us. And serving God is a supernatural thing. And Jesus called them, and He equipped them, He wanted them to do their, that work, they couldn't do it. And you know, it's what we're seeing here is he partnered with them and they couldn't do it. Back to Matthew 10 that we spoke on a few weeks ago. In Matthew 10 and verse number 1 it says, He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. They had the power. He gave that to them. But when it came down to it, they were, they were unable. And I'll tell you, wouldn't it be something if God had equipped our church and God had done all of these things for each and every one of us. But when it come down to it, when the lines drawn, we're unable. Wouldn't that be awful? See, God can equip us, but there comes a point where we have to be able to do our part. You may say, well, God can do it. He don't need us. Well, right here in the text, He needed them. He equipped them. There's a certain man. 
The man brings his son. He brings him to the disciples. And he couldn't cure them. They couldn't do what God had equipped them to do. And in verse number 19, it says, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast them out? And Jesus said, Because of your unbelief. See, the problem was not with God. A lot of times when we hard times hit or we're unable, we hit walls in our life, we see problems, we see family problems, we see difficulties, financial problems, we look at God. The problem's never with God. He's never the problem. He's never the issue. And I think if anything stands out in the message tonight, we want to blame God. We want to think, why? But there's nothing wrong with God. He's perfect. He's holy. God's never the problem. The problem is man. And it come down to verse 20 because of your unbelief. It was unbelief that got them there. Because of your unbelief. I say unto you, if you had the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, I say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place that shall remove, nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind goeth on out by prayer and fasting. What he's saying there is you've got to have faith, just a little bit of faith. You turn this man away, you didn't even try to help his son. You didn't have the faith to even try. This is going to hurt. But isn't that the way we are a lot of times with our family issues and things? They'll say, what's the use? They've made their decision. Or we pray and we pray and we pray and we kind of get cold on it. We say, man, I prayed that long enough, I'm going to put it in a back burner. Maybe God can do it later. Maybe. We'll put it in the microwave where it stays warm or something. We do that sometimes when it comes to praying and things. But he says, how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. When it's a supernatural force and there's this work against evil, we've got to have prayer. We've got to have fasting. Yes, God can. But yes, God has equipped us. And yes, God wants to use us. In James 2 and 26, for the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. As much as the body without that spirit is just a dead corpse for a funeral at a funeral home, so is having that faith without the prayer, without the fasting, without our works, without our heart, without the believing. We're just saying, God, you just do it. Throwing it all on God. No, we play a part as well. He's able. But what if Noah would have said, hey, what's the use? What if those men at Lazarus' tomb said, I'm not going to roll that stone away. I don't believe he's in there. You're crazy. He's dead. I saw him put him in there. I ain't rolling that stone. You may say, man, that's awful harsh. We do it all the time. We put the nail in and say, it's over. God can't do that. God can't handle that. But it takes faith. See, one thing we've got to be careful for when I say a dual partnership and I say works is we think, well, I can work and when I work, that makes me righteous. This, but this is not a works-based religion. God don't need my works. And I said that Sunday night pretty plain. When I kneel before the throne and Jesus is there and I'm looking at Jesus that sacrificed, my works will mean nothing compared to what he did. But it's not a works-based religion. Isaiah 6 and 64 and 6 says, My righteousness is as filthy rags. Even, as my, even at my best point, I'm still as filthy rags at my best. So our text is telling us something else. It's not what makes us pure. It's not what makes us holy. It's not what makes us righteous. Our text is saying that Jesus said to them, It's because of your unbelief. You've got unbelief in your life. If you had the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall move a mountain. If you just have that kind of faith, just a little bit of faith, you can do mighty, mighty big things. God can and God will, but He needs us. He needs every one of us. You may say, who am I? I'm just sitting here on the pew. You're part of Roaring Creek Missionary Baptist. You're part of the kingdom. You're part of the glory. God needs every single person from the pulpit all the way down. He needs us all. You may say, what does he need us to do? Well, 21 says, How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. There's got to be some effort to accompany our faith. In other words, when all it takes is a little, 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 little bit of faith, we also need prayer. 
We also need fasting. We also may need to just stay, hey, invite them to church. Hey, uh, um, hey, witness to them. You know what God done for me? You know what God done for Glenda this week? Uh, she's supposed to go for tests and didn't have to have them. God's a good God. Whatever the need may be. We've been praying for someone and they're out of the hospital. We're praying for somebody that had an accident. And guess what? It was much better than what we thought. But we, we, gotta, we have to be witnesses. We have to be the light. And we have to do our part. See, Jesus could have just said, I have faith and sat there and done nothing his whole life. But what did he do? He ministered. The Bible said he didn't come to be ministered to, but he came to minister to others. So see that faith without any kind of backing behind it is dead. A lack of works reveals really what's on our heart, you know. You look in the inside of your heart, if God's in there, you're truly going to back it with prayer, back it with some kind of evidence, some kind of support to show that he's real. There's going to be some effort. I'll tell you, it's hard sometimes. It's easy to pray sometimes. It's easy to give it to God. But then it's hard sometimes if he tells us to go do this and do that and to witness to this person, invite this person. But I'll tell you, if we don't see it getting done and we don't see a prayer getting answered, the problem's not God. It's never to point to God. It's never to look at that mountain and say that mountain's too big or God wasn't big enough to move it. Because the Bible said there's nothing impossible. He can do it all. There's no way that God is the problem. He's equipped us for the work. He's equipped us for the work that he wants us to do. And if there's no work to go along with that faith, like James 2, 26 says, faith without works is dead. Much like that body with a spirit. Without that spirit, is dead. Still today, the root of that problem, the core of that problem, I think, even after all this study and all these weeks, I truly believe it comes down to the same one word, unbelief. Because of your unbelief. What shuts down the ministry in the church? Unbelief. What shuts down knocking on somebody's door and inviting the church? Unbelief. What shuts down praying and fasting and wholeheartedly turning over something to God? Unbelief. There is this dual partnership with God. And I said a few weeks ago, what He's equipped us to do and what He wants us to do and His charge to us is Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you and ye shall be witnesses. We get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes and lives on the inside and He equips us not to go healing, not, not to go in the, uh, and what He equipped the disciples to do. But our, our equipment, what He's equipped us to do is to, with the Holy Ghost and to be witnesses. Everywhere we go, He's equipped us to be witnesses. He's equipped us and the Holy Spirit, God, one part of the Trinity living on the inside. And it says, if you have the faith, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. You may say, Why does it just take a little bit? Because there's a big God living in us. And I'll tell you, if we just partner with that God, and we put faith with that God, prayer with that God, fasting with that God, our works with that God, our good deeds, whatever it is, not to save us, not to make us righteous, but partner with God to accomplish His glory and to accomplish His task and what He's prepared us to do in the dual partnership of God, my gosh, we can do something big. But as I studied and prepared to preach and share this thought, I thought about how many times has He equipped me or equipped us all and we dropped the ball. And unbelief stops us dead in the tracks. A man brought his son, supposed to be healed, Disciples couldn't do it. They ask why. They say, um, he says, unbelief. We've got to have the faith enough to take it to God in verse 20. That's what it says. Not only the faith to take it to God, verse 21, take it with prayer, take it with fasting. And I believe we're truly we need to do our part along with it. Some effort to go with it. Whether it's the prayer, whether it's the fasting, whether it's inviting, whatever it is, I don't know the, what, the, what it is, but he all, he's equipped us to be a witness. And to be a witness, going to take us doing a part of that to be a witness. 
In other words, you don't pray to be a witness. Praying can accomplish his task. But if he's equipped us to be a witness, we've got to do our part. And isn't it amazing to think that God in heaven wants to partner with man? How in the world does he use us? I mean, if you really look at all of us, I don't know. I mean, how can he use a little church in Avery County, Roaring Creek? How can he use us? I don't know, but here's the thing. If we ever do accomplish anything, it's going to be through him, by him. It's not works-based. It's not works to be saved. But we've got to pray. We've got to fast. And we've got to have some kind of substance because faith without works is dead just like an empty body. God can accomplish his will. God certainly can do whatever he wants to do. And I say this, God can accomplish his will, and God will accomplish his will. Whether we're part of it or not, it's up to us. And I truly believe this is uh, our last message here in the Faith to Move Mountains, and what a thought that it is a dual partnership with God. But what a, part, what a thought as well is it takes our part. We've seen the unbelief and how unbelief can it can affect souls. It affected this man's boy that needed to be healed. And it really anybody that was witnessing that. You hadn't really thought about that till right now. Look at that. I'm, we've said it in five weeks. I've read it over and over and just thought of that. What about all the people that was watching that day? And they said, a certain man, he's out of the crowd. He's out of the multitude. That certain man's there, and they're unable. They had to been other people see that. And, and as much as that affected them, it affected others. And my gosh, they're believing that Jesus, and now he's equipped them, and they can't do it. But my, 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 isn't it amazing the fact that he wants to partner with us, he does partner with us, and he wants to use us. Looking forward to our Christmas season and how he wants to use us. Looking forward to coming months and coming years of just how he wants to use us. We just have to be willing we have to have that faith as a grain of mustard. See, so keep that. But prayer and fasting. And I'll tell you, you leave one thing out of that, and you leave out God, we will we'll never accomplish anything. It's got to take God. I'll tell you, let's just trust Him, believe Him. And, uh, and it really, like a verse says, all things are possible. And anything's possible when it comes to Him. And it's not just possible to Him. It said in that verse 20, possible, anything is possible to us unto you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I sure thank you for this study that we've had. I thank you, Lord, that even as closing this series and closing this study that we've had on Wednesday nights, even in closing, you're showing us new things. Just, uh, just how, it just shows us how real your word is and how uh, you can really just pull things out of the word of God and just uh, really, you can sh keep on. It's a light, and it just keeps on showing. It just—it's a living, breathing word. And Lord, I'm so thankful for it. I thank you for what you've shown us over this past little bit. And I know, Lord, that sometimes we we may feel and we may think that we we can't do this and we can't do that. But really, if you're in it, anything can be accomplished. And not only that, you want to partner with us and you want to use us. And it's an amazing thing that you want to use us. We just got to be willing. We just got to have the faith. We just got to have the belief, have the desire, and you can do amazing things. Just like those disciples, how they wasn't able. Those people watched that. They seen that. And Lord, just forgive us for where we failed you, but so help, help us step in long strides forward in, in the right direction in, in, in our faith, in our works, and, and things that we do for, for you. It's not about our works, but we do it because of what you've done for us and because of how you've equipped us to do the work. Lord, we sure do love you. We thank you. We thank you for how you've helped us over these past few weeks. Lord, just give us direction in the coming weeks of what, how you'd, uh, have us, what you'd have us share. And Lord, just let us realize that while there may be mountains in our life, it could be um, our bank accounts and it could be a health problem. It could be family troubles. But whatever the mountain may be, you truly want to use us to help get over that mountain. And maybe we just need to talk to those individuals if we love them. Maybe we just need to uh, uh, turn something over in prayer. Maybe we just need to fast. But whatever it is, let us turn it over to you. Let us help 
uh, let us do our part. We pray for those that are struggling with the health, that they give doctors the wisdom. And Lord, you just pray that you just use our church in a mighty way, not for our glory, not for us a name. Nobody cares if we have a name. It's all about you. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you've allowed us to do. And just uh, be with us in Jesus' name. Amen.